Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing a video review of the latest McFarlane figures from the King Shark build a figure wave. Today we're looking at Polka Dot Man and Harley Quinn. Right there. These are the only two figures from the wave that I'm planning to get, and I'll talk about that in a bit. That being said, I will go to the box art in a bit. I sold off the two build a figure pieces that came with this figure. So, onto the box. Here's the front of the package. Like I said, I, I bought it. I bought it like this. I knew I wasn't going to get the whole wave, so this is what it looks like. Here's the side of the package. This is both Harley Quinn Polka Dot Man. You see on the back is photos of the of the characters, as you'll see in the character cards as well later. Um, you'll see all the other images of the figures that comes with the wave and who is assigned to what Build-A-Figure piece for the King Shark Build-A-Figure wave. But I, like I said, I'm not going to get that. So I won't be able to review it for you guys. So you'll only see these two figures, Polka Dot Man and Harley Quinn, as we look at the bottom of the packaging and the top of the packaging. And there we go. That's, that's the packaging. Now we get back to the figures. So we'll look at two figures right here. Before we look at both of them in detail, let's take a look at the accessories that they both come with. So taking a close look at the accessories, let's start off with the typical DC display base that comes with a lot of McFarlane figures. So you can get out the, that out of the way. You also have the collecting the collectible cards the collectors cards um, of Harley Quinn and Polka Dot Man and here's the back of the cards in case you want to read it for Harley she has her little staff thing which is very well detailed very subtle in real life it's you can see it more on the screen than I can than I can in real life so it's very subtle but it's very detailed and she holds onto it very well it's also one of those bendy plastics but it's very lightweight. So I'm not worried about it warping over time, unlike some of the heavier McFarlane um, accessories. For Polka Dot Man, we have a bit more accessories. We have the two gauntlets, the one closed gauntlet, the one open gauntlet for his right hand. His left hand is a permanent closed gauntlet. Um, we have the Polka Dot Blast, which I think it has a hole. I think it's the hole supposed to be there. I don't know if mine just snapped, but it honestly, the hole helps to keep it on. I'll show you how it works in a bit. And we have the goggles. So how does it work? Well, when you take out Polka Dot Man's hand, you can just slip off the gauntlet. You see there's a groove here, and both of these have grooves on the inside with which you can just slip it on. Slip it on. Fairly easily. I say. I say fairly easily. So there, you can have the two close gauntlet look, or you can be using his polka dot powers with this one gauntlet look and then just put back the hand. There you go. So while we have him out, let's take a look at polka dot man. Now the reason why I picked the polka, polka dot man of all the figures in this wave is the fact that I never expected to get a polka dot man figure. I never knew I wanted one. And the fact that they announced, when the moment they announced it, I, I was like, I gotta have it. It's just f such a fun figure to, to think about having and such a joy to have such a B list character. I wouldn't even say B list character. Who knew about Polka Dot Man before Suicide Squad? I think I knew him in passing, but just the fact that I have him super in action figure form, he's not a Superman or is he Green Lantern or, you know, Batman. It's just great that we have him right now. Let's take a quick look at it beside the collector card. The amazing thing is they put so much work in this figure. McFarlane does sculpts very well. But if you can see, it's actually also very accurate. You can see the, the dot placement is very, very close to the, to the photo over here. So we have the two dots, the red and green dots over here. They coincide with the red and green dots on the head. And most of the dots are painted immaculately. Like, you can see a little bit of paint scuff over this dot. I don't know if you can see that. But most of the dots are very well, well painted. Um, you have this shoulder dot, which coincides with this shoulder dot, and I don't know if it changes colors in the film, but at, as of the card to the figure, not all this color accurate, but they're very placed. They're placed pretty accurate. Those two correspond with these two. You have two dots in the shoulder, on the arm, which have, there are two dots on the arm, but although, again, different color, different placement for the arm. You have this tiny dot right over here. And a dot over here and another dot over here, which coincides with these dots. So you can see it. it's very similar. These three, for these three, then you got the four dots, um, four dots, the big, small, medium dots. They're very, very similar. And the, the, the fact that they put so much effort 
into polka dot man of all characters is i absolutely love it it, it is so much fun to have this figure on me so, so much fun to have this this figure in hand and the detail is great i think that bring up the camera a little bit that the likeness to the actor and again again i haven't seen any of the trailers because i don't like watching trailers because sometimes they give away the movie too much but the likeness of the actor is very very close i think it might be one of the best that mcfarlane has done in terms of live action live action face sculpts so taking a quick look over there you can see how he looks just a quick turnaround see the back there's a lot of good detail and this whole chest piece is a rubber is is one rubber piece this whole this whole chest piece you can see is one rubber piece and it works very well it hides the articulation in the inside very well if only these dots i wonder if, if they could have made these dots different colors these hinges i mean the articulation points that would have been fun if they made that if they made those polka dots so you can see his belt very well detailed A lot of sculpt work for this figure. A lot of effort was put into making Polka Dot Man look good. His boots look really nice. Now, as said earlier, he has goggles that you can slip on his head. And a lot of goggles, I, I'm always wary of goggles because they don't, they don't always fit well in action figures. But this, this looks like it fits very well. You can see his eyes behind the red plastic. This fits on very well. It looks like it's a part of the head. It, it's a very seamless and it's very easy to put on. Sorry about the autofocus. No autofocus. There you go. It works very well. Um, normally, McFarlane does what they usually do with separate head sculpts. They release a, a separate figure with another head sculpt. This one, they just gave us goggles and it works perfectly. I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of what they do, but it makes them money and they give us great tooling all the time anyway. So I can't fault them. I am glad that I am glad that they do it, that they give us great tooling anyway for every single release. So speaking of the new tooling, we'll look, take a look at the articulation, especially with this whole uh, rubber, rubber piece. He can look up. His head's in a double ball joint. Not down too much. That's as far down as he goes. I guess that's not so bad. Um, Side to side, he can do some attitude. Oh, his goggles are coming out. Let's take it out, them out for now. I do prefer his goggles, look. His arms can go out. It's a little bit loose. They can rotate. So yeah, it, the arms are a little bit loose in mine. I don't know if that's for everyone. His bicep, there's a swivel there. Double jointed elbows. His hand has the typical McFarlane joint. Up, down, around. So, it's hidden pretty well, I would say. His torso, because of this whole piece, can go back, can move forward a little bit, and can do the hula hoops. And there's a little piece underneath which sort of continues from the waist. So this jacket is an over; it's placed over the over the waist piece, which is good, which is great. His legs are the typical McFarlane legs they can go up they can go back pretty far because this is uh, again a little bit of a softer material double jointed legs it's tough the second one is tough double jointed legs um no boot rotation or anything like that his there's a ball joint in under the boot but it's hindered by the boot a little bit so but he can still go left to right up not so much up that's as far up as it goes down a lot more down and it's still very, very tiny toe joint. So not bad in terms of articulation. Put back his little goggles. So that's Polka Dot Man. Oh, I forgot I forgot to show. So for the polka dot effect, all you gotta do is slip it on over there. Because of the because of the hole, it's much easier to adjust to the open vent. So you got that look going. Now for Harley, also a great looking figure. Not 100% spot on Margot Robbie, but still, it's it's pretty much there. McFarlane's getting better with their with their live action face sculpts. So you have her hair. I the hair cuts off at the hair dye cuts off here. It doesn't look very natural. 
Like I feel like it should sort of streak in, but otherwise it looks great. You have her in her dress. Um, you got very detailed look all over. And the dress is a bit of a soft plastic all throughout. And then coming down to her legs and you have her boots over there, big ball joints. Now you have her tattoos all around. I'm going to close up here on Harley. There you go. So you have the little tattoos. Daddy's little monster, her signature tattoo. You have her, you have the Harley Quinn diamonds tattooed on her arm. You have the... I don't know what it is. It looks like a J for Joker. Ugh. Should be Poison Ivy. So it's property of no one. So I think I think it looks like she, it, she covered up the Joker with another tattoo. And you can do you do you can see the off. It's it's it is there. So very detailed, very well placed. And then you can see her leg over here where you can see that she I'm going to turn her around. Where you can see that she tattooed things on herself. I'm sorry. Harley, I'm going to pull your skirt up a little bit. So, pudding cups, pudding plus Harley. You got the tick marks for whatever reason. Then you got the Joker, um, the Jester icon right there. So, pretty good. Pretty good, pretty well detailed. And of course, her heart tattoo. So, that's Harley. There's a little bit less to talk about than. Man. I picked up Harley because Harley Quinn is one of my favorite, um, super favorite comic book characters next to Green Lantern. So I had to pick her up. It's a good look for her. I wish we got the uh, the other look, the more contemporary look that we saw in the promo images. But there we go. So articulation, how does she move? That's what's important, right? Because she is an action figure. So, so the head moves up pretty pretty. Moves up pretty far. Moves down even further. So she can look down. Her arms can move out. They can both do the same thing. Um, spin around at the shoulder, spin around at the bicep. I don't know if you can see it well because the red is blending in with the other red. So yeah, double joint. So that works very well. Her hand is on a the typical McFarlane hinge. So you get you can you can do a wave, you can do whatever you want with that. And it's there. It doesn't look so bad. It doesn't look too big. So it's but it's still there. You can you can clearly see that. Her chest, because this is one piece, there's really not much movement with her chest. It is a soft plastic and there's a little bit of articulation you can see, and I'm stretching the rubber a little bit. But it's not very well articulated. There's no moving forward button. There's basically they've frozen the waist. I feel like they could have done a cut here, it could have helped, but it is what it is. Um, the legs are still the typical McFarlane legs, can't go out past this, the, the dress here. And again, it's a multi-layered dress, but the layer inside, you can't go out further than that. This leg goes out a little bit more, um, front a little bit as far as the dress would let it, back not at, not so much. Legs can double. This one, also not so much because it gets in the the skirt gets in the way. No boot rotation, but the ankles are the typical McFarlane ankles, so they do move down, they do move up, much better than Polka Dot Man. Swivel, and the toe joint. So not very great in terms of the articulation, but there you have it. I think it could be improved. But it is what it is. Because of, the, because of the torso, it's a bit hard to send her up because the torso can't move forward, back. You can't adjust it like that. So there you go. Who do, I, who do I like better from the two? I don't know. I don't know. I like Harley Quinn because I like the character. But there's so much detail in Polka Dot Man and the fact that we have Polka Dot Man at all is great. I can't get over that. So I don't know who I would recommend between the two if you were to get one of the two. Now to do some size comparisons, this fig these figures come just a little under 7 inches. It's, so it's a little bit short for a McFarlane figure, so Pokedotman comes shy of 7 inches, and Harley comes at around 7 and 3 quarters of an inch, which is 
again, little small for a character, and the Harley Quinn is not wearing heels or anything. So what? An action figure, a female action figure without heels? Outrageous. No, I like the boots. I really like the boots. So bring down the camera a little bit so you can see how they stack up beside other figures. Sticking with the movie verse, we have here the Man of Steel himself. And again, I said this was a tall figure. So you can see that he does tower over the two. Superman should be tall. So if they were in ever, if they ever shared the screen, who knows. For a more standard McFarlane figure, Green Lantern is seven inches tall. So you can see, other than the camera, the, the camera fudging, he's a little bit taller than, than Polka Dot Man, but very, very slightly. With a typical Marvel legend, he is with Iron Man, who is a lot shorter, which he should be. He's a six inch figure, the other guys are seven inches. So that's great. Now, I don't have anyone to compare Polka Dot Man with that will be relevant. So I'm not sure. Maybe Batman or something like that? I don't know who his hero counterpart is. So we'll just bring Harley Quinn here and compare her to other Harley Quinns that I have. So here she is with other Harley Quinn figures. We have the Bombshells Harley DC Collectibles, we have the DC Icons. Harley Quinn, I gave her the Icons Green Lantern and, and a Darth Vader lightsaber because Harley, she does what she wants. Um, of course, the McFarlane Harley Quinn and DC Collectibles New 52 Harley Quinn with Poison Ivy's Rose. So that's how she stacks up to all her other counterparts. In case you want a Harley, figure, a Harley Quinn display, there you go. So again, what do I think of these two figures? These, I like the figures. I don't, I haven't seen the Suicide Squad movie. I don't have any affiliation yet to um, any of the fi any of the characters there, but these two characters, these two figures, I really like Harley. You know, McFarlane doesn't do the best live action faces, but Har but for Harley and for Polka Dot Man, they nailed they nailed the sculpt of these guys. Harley Quinn just looks great, although her articulation is a bit lackluster. Just standing on the shelf, it looks great. It looks stunning. The red is striking. She's going to stand out on any shelf. Polka Dot Man, the fact that we have Polka Dot Man, I really, really, really enjoy. And the fact that it's good, that's the fact that it's not just a throwaway sculpt, the fact that I would actually say that this is a good figure is great. It's amazing to me, and I, and I, and I 100%, I like it. I like both figures. Both of them gets a thumbs up from me. Not perfect figures by any stretch of the imagination, but great figures nonetheless, worth your time and effort to track them down if you are on the fence about it. So there you go. Harley Quinn and Polka Dot Man. So there you go. If you like this video, do follow me. I'll have more figure reviews coming up very soon. I'll see you guys later. Good luck getting these figures, Polka Dot Man. I just realized his goggles are also Polka Dots. His goggles are, are Polka Dots. That's great design. He's coming for you. Wow.